Parallel ADA, originally an attachment, also known as ADA or IDE as standard interface for IBM computers. It was first developed by Western Digital and Compaq in 1986 for compatible hard drives and CD or DVD drives. The connection is used for storage devices such as hard disk drives, floppy disk drives, and optical disk drives in computers. The standard is maintained by the X3 slash and SITS committee. It uses the underlying at attachment and at attachment packet interface standards. The parallel at a standard is the result of a long history of incremental technical development, which began with the original at attachment interface, developed for use in early PC at equipment. The ADA interface itself evolved in several stages from Western Digital's original integrated drive electronics interface. As a result, many near synonyms for ADA slash ATAPI in its previous incarnations are still in common informal use, in particular extended IDE and Ultra ADA. After the introduction of Serial ADA in 2003, the original ADA was renamed to Parallel ADA, or PADA for short. Parallel ADA cables have a maximum allowable length of 18 in. Because of this limit, the technology normally appears as an internal computer storage interface. For many years, ADA provided the most common and the least expensive interface for this application. It has largely been replaced by SATA in newer systems. The standard was originally conceived as the ATBUS attachment, officially called it attachment and abbreviated ADA because its primary feature was a direct connection to the 16-bit ESA bus introduced with the IBM PC slash ATT. The original ADA specifications published by the standards committees use the name at attachment. The ad in the IBM PC slash it referred to advanced technology so ADA has also been referred to as advanced technology attachment. When a newer serial ADA was introduced in 2003, the original ADA was renamed to parallel ADA, or PADA for short. Physical ADA interfaces became a standard component in all PCs, initially on host bus adapters, sometimes on a sound card but ultimately as two physical interfaces embedded in a Southbridge chip on a motherboard. Called the primary and secondary ADA interfaces, they were assigned to base addresses 0x1 F0 and 0x170 on ESA bus systems. They were replaced by SATA interfaces. Example of a 1992-80386 PC motherboard with nothing built in other than memory, keyboard, processor, cache, real-time clock, and slots. Such basic motherboards could have been outfitted with either the ST506 or ADA interface, but usually not both. A single two-drive ADA interface and a floppy interface was added to this system via the 16-bit ESA card. The first version of what is now called the ADA slash ATAPI interface was developed by Western Digital under the name Integrated Drive Electronics. Together with Control Data Corporation and Compact Computer, they developed the connector, the signaling protocols and so on, with the goal of remaining software compatible with the existing ST506 hard drive interface. The first such drives appeared internally in compact PCs in 1986, and were first separately offered by Connor Peripherals as the CP342 in June 1987. The term integrated drive electronics refers not just to the connector and interface definition, but also to the fact that the drive controller is integrated into the drive, as opposed to a separate controller on or connected to the motherboard. The interface cards used to connect a parallel at a drive to, for example, a PCI slot are not drive controllers, they are merely bridges between the host bus and the ADA interface. Since the original ADA interface is essentially just a 16-bit ESA bus in disguise, the bridge was especially simple in case of an ADA connector being located on an ESA interface card. The integrated controller presented the drive to the host computer as an array of 512-byte blocks with a relatively simple command interface. This relieved the mainboard and interface cards in the host computer of the chores of stepping the disk head arm, moving the head arm in and out, and so on, as had to be done with earlier ST506 and ST hard drives. All of these low-level details of the mechanical operation of the drive were now handled by the controller on the drive itself. This also eliminated the need to design a single controller that could handle many different types of drives, since the controller could be unique for the drive. The host need only to ask for a particular sector, or block, to be read or written, and either accept the data from the drive or send the data to it. The interface used by these drives was standardized in 1994 as ANSI Standard X3. 2211994, at attachment interface for disk drives. After later versions of the standard were developed, this became known as ADA1. A short-lived, 
seldom used implementation of ADA was created for the IBM XD and similar machines that use the 8-bit version of the ESA bus. It has been referred to as XTIDE, XTA or XD attachment. In 1994, about the same time that the ADA 1 standard was adopted, Western Digital introduced drives under a newer name, Enhanced IDE. These included most of the features of the forthcoming ADA 2 specification and several additional enhancements. Other manufacturers introduced their own variations of ADA 1 such as Fast ADA and Fast ADA 2. The new version of the ANSI standard, at attachment interface with extensions ADA 2, was approved in 1996. It included most of the features of the manufacturer's specific variants. ADA 2 also was the first to note that devices other than hard drives could be attached to the interface. 3. 1. 7 device, device is a storage peripheral. Traditionally, a device on the ADA interface has been a hard disk drive, but any form of storage device may be placed on the ADA interface provided it adheres to this standard. At attachment interface with extensions, page 2 is mentioned in the previous sections, ADA was originally designed for, and worked only with hard disk drives and devices that could emulate them. The introduction of a TAPI by a group called the Small Form Factor Committee allowed ADA to be used for a variety of other devices that require functions beyond those necessary for hard disk drives. For example, any removable media device needs a media eject command, and a way for the host to determine whether the media is present, and these were not provided in the ADA protocol. The Small Form Factor Committee approached this problem by defining a TAPI, the ADA packet interface. A TAPI is actually a protocol allowing the ADA interface to carry SCSI commands and responses, therefore, all a TAPI devices are actually speaking SCSI other than at the electrical interface. In fact, some early a TAPI devices were simply SCSI devices with an ADA slash a TAPI to SCSI protocol converter added on. The SCSI commands and responses are embedded in packets for transmission on the ADA cable. This allows any device class for which a SCSI command set has been defined to be interfaced via ADA slash a TAPI. A TAPI devices are also speaking ADA, as the ADA physical interface and protocol are still being used to send the packets. On the other hand, ADA hard drives and solid state drives do not use a TAPI. A TAPI devices include CD-ROM and DVD-ROM drives, tape drives, and large capacity floppy drives such as the zip drive and super disk drive. The SCSI commands and responses used by each class of a TAPI device are described in other documents or specifications specific to those device classes and are not within ADA slash a TAPI or the T13 committee's purview. One commonly used set is defined in the MMC SCSI command set. A TAPI was adopted as part of ADA in INSIT 317-1998 at attachment with packet interface extension. The ADA slash a TAPI 4 standard also introduced several ultra DMA transfer modes. These initially supported speeds from 16 MB S to 33 MB per second. In later versions, faster ultra DMA modes were added, requiring new 80 wire cables to reduce crosstalk. The latest versions of parallel ADA support up to 133 MB S. Ultra ADA, abbreviated WADA, is a designation that has been primarily used by Western Digital for different speed enhancements to the ADA slash ATAPI standards. For example, in 2000 Western Digital published a document describing Ultra ADA slash 100, which brought performance improvements for the then current ADA slash ATAPI 5 standard by improving maximum speed of the parallel ADA interface from 66 to 100 megabytes per second. Most of Western Digital's changes, along with others, were included in the ADA slash ATAPI 6 standard. The terms integrated drive electronics, enhanced IDE and IDA have come to be used interchangeably with ADA. In addition, there have been several generations of IDA drives marketed, compliant with various versions of the ADA specification. An early IDA drive might be compatible with ADA 2, while a later one with ADA 6. Nevertheless, a request for an IDE or IDA drive from a computer parts vendor will almost always yield a drive that will work with most parallel IDA interfaces. Another common usage is to refer to the specification version by the fastest mode supported. For example, ADA 4 supported Ultra DMA mode 0 through 2, the latter providing a maximum transfer rate of 33 megabytes per second. ADA 4 drives are thus sometimes called UDMA 33 drives, and sometimes ADA 33 drives. Similarly, ADA 6 introduced a maximum transfer speed of 100 megabytes per second, and some drives complying to this version of the standard are marketed as POTA 100 drives. Initially, 
The size of an ATA drive was stored in the system x86 BIOS using a type number that predefined the C/H/S parameters and also often the landing zone, in which the drive heads are parked while not in use. Later, a user-definable format called C/H/S or cylinders, heads, sectors was made available. These numbers were important for the earlier SD506 interface, but were generally meaningless for ATA, the CHS parameters for later ATA large drives. Often specified in possibly high numbers of heads or sectors that did not actually define the internal physical layout of the drive at all. From the start, and up to ATA2, every user had to specify explicitly how large every attached drive was. From ATA2 on, an identified drive command was implemented that can be sent and which will return all drive parameters. Owing to a lack of foresight by motherboard manufacturers, the system BIOS was often hobbled by artificial C/H/S size limitations due to the manufacturer assuming certain values would never exceed a particular numerical maximum. The first of these BIOS limits occurred when ATA drives reached sizes in excess of 504 MB because some motherboard BIOSes would not allow C/H/S values above 1024 cylinders, 16 heads, and 63 sectors. Multiplied by 512 bytes per sector, this totals 528,482,304 bytes which, divided by 1,048,576 bytes per megabyte, equals 504 megabytes. The second of these BIOS limitations occurred at 1,024 cylinders, 256 heads, and 63 sectors, and a bug in MS-DOS and MS-Windows 95 limited the number of heads to 255. This totals to 8,422,686,720 bytes, commonly referred to as the 8.4 gigabyte barrier. This is again a limit imposed by x86 biases, and not a limit imposed by the ATA interface. It was eventually determined that these size limitations could be overridden with a tiny program loaded at startup from a hard drive's boot sector. Some hard drive manufacturers, such as Western Digital, started including these override utilities with new large hard drives to help overcome these problems. However, if the computer was booted in some other manner without loading the special utility, the invalid BIOS settings would be used and the drive could either be inaccessible or appear to the operating system to be damaged. Later, an extension to the x86 BIOS disk services called the Enhanced Disk Drive was made available, which makes it possible to address drives as large as 264 sectors. The first drive interface used 22-bit addressing mode which resulted in a maximum drive capacity of 2 GB. Later, the first formalized ATA specification used a 28-bit addressing mode through LBA28, allowing for the addressing of 228 sectors of 512 bytes each, resulting in a maximum capacity of 128 GB. ATA6 introduced 48-bit addressing, increasing the limit to 128 pebabytes. As a consequence, any ATA drive of capacity larger than about 137 gigabytes must be an ATA 6 or later drive. Connecting such a drive to a host with an ATA 5 or earlier interface will limit the usable capacity to the maximum of the interface. Some operating systems, including Windows XP pre-SP1 and Windows 2000 pre-SP3, disable LBA48 by default requiring the user to take extra steps to use the entire capacity of an ATA drive larger than about 137 gigabytes. Older operating systems, such as Windows 98, do not support 48-bit LBA at all. However, members of the third-party group MSFN have modified the Windows 98 disk drivers to add unofficial support for 48-bit LBA to Windows 95 OSR2, Windows 98, Windows 98 SE and Windows Me. Some 16-bit and 32-bit operating systems supporting LBA48 may still not support disks larger than 2 to bibytes due to using 32-bit arithmetics only, a limitation also applying to many boot sectors. Parallel ATA became the primary storage device interface for PCs soon after its introduction. In some systems, a third and fourth motherboard interface was provided, allowing up to eight ATA devices to be attached to the motherboard. Often, these additional connectors were implemented by inexpensive RAID controllers. Soon after the introduction of Serial ATA in 2003, use of Parallel ATA declined. The first motherboards with built-in SATA interfaces usually had only a single PATA connector, along with multiple SATA connectors. Some PCs and laptops of the era have a SATA hard disk and an optical drive connected to PATA. As of 2007, some PC chipsets, for example the Intel ICH-10, had removed support for PATA. 
Motherboard vendors still wishing to offer parallel ADA with those chipsets must include an additional interface chip. In more recent computers, the parallel ADA interface is rarely used even if present, as four or more serial ADA connectors are usually provided on the motherboard and SATA devices of all types are common. With Western Digital's withdrawal from the PATA market, hard disk drives with the PATA interface were no longer in production after December 2013 for other than specialty applications. Parallel ADA cables transfer data 16 bits at a time. The traditional cable uses 40-pin female connectors attached to a 40 or 80 conductor ribbon cable. Each cable has two or three connectors, one of which plugs into a host adapter interfacing with the rest of the computer system. The remaining connector plug into storage devices, most commonly hard disk drives or optical drives. Each connector has 39 physical pins arranged into two rows, with a gap or key at pin 20. Round parallel ADA cables were eventually made available for case modders for cosmetic reasons, as well as claims of improved computer cooling and were easier to handle, however, only ribbon cables are supported by the ADA specifications. In the ADA standard, pin 20 is defined as a mechanical key and is not used. This pin socket on the female connector is often obstructed, requiring pin 20 to be emitted from the male cable or drive connector, it is thus impossible to plug it in the wrong way round. However, some flash memory drives can use pin 20 as VCC underscore in to power the drive without requiring a special power cable. This feature can only be used if the equipment supports this use of pin 20. Pin 28 of the gray connector of an 80 conductor cable is not attached to any conductor of the cable. It is attached normally on the black and blue connectors. This enables cable select functionality. Pin 34 is connected to ground inside the blue connector of an 80 conductor cable but not attached to any conductor of the cable, allowing for detection of such a cable. It is attached normally on the gray and black connectors. A 44-pin variant POTA connector is used for two 5-inch drives inside laptops. The pins are closer together and the connector is physically smaller than the 40-pin connector. The extra pins carry power. 80-pin parallel at an interface on a 1. 8 inches hard disk ADAS cables have had 40 conductors for most of its history, but an 80 conductor version appeared with the introduction of the UDMA 66 mode. All of the additional conductors in the new cable are grounds, interleaved with the signal conductors to reduce the effects of capacitive coupling between neighboring signal conductors, reducing crosstalk. Capacitive coupling is more of a problem at higher transfer rates, and this change was necessary to enable the 66 megabytes per second transfer rate of UDMA 4 to work reliably. The faster UDMA 5 and UDMA 6 modes also require 80 conductor cables. Comparison between ADA cables, 40 conductor ribbon cable, and 80 conductor ribbon cable. In both cases, a 40 pin female connector is used. Though the number of conductors doubled, the number of connector pins and the pinout remain the same as 40 conductor cables, and the external appearance of the connectors is identical. Internally, the connectors are different. The connectors for the 80 conductor cable connect a larger number of ground conductors to the ground pins, while the connectors for the 40 conductor cable connect ground conductors to ground pins one to one. 80 conductor cables usually come with three differently colored connectors as opposed to uniformly colored 40 conductor cables connectors. The gray connector on 80 conductor cables has pin 28 shell not connected, making it to the slave position for drives configured cable select. Differences between connectors Differences between connectors The image on the right shows PATA connectors after removal of strain relief, cover, and cable. Pin 1 is at bottom left of the connectors, pin 2 is top left, etc. Except that the lower image of the blue connector shows the view from the opposite side, and pin 1 is at top right. The connector is an insulation displacement connector, each contact comprises a pair of points which together pierce the insulation of the ribbon. Cable with such precision that they make a connection to the desired conductor without harming the insulation on the neighboring conductors. The center row of contacts are all connected to the common ground bus and attached to the odd-numbered conductors of the cable. The top row of contacts are the even-numbered sockets of the connector and attached to every other even-numbered conductor of the cable. The bottom row of contacts are the odd-numbered sockets of the connector and attached to the remaining even-numbered conductors of the cable. Note the connections to the common ground bus from sockets to 19, 22, 24, 26, 30, and 40 on all connectors. Also note that socket 34 of the blue connector does not contact any conductor but unlike socket 34 of the other two connectors, it does connect to the common ground bus. On the gray connector, note that socket 28 is completely missing, 
so that pin 28 of the drive attached to the gray connector will be open. On the black connector, sockets 28 and 34 are completely normal, so that pins 28 and 34 of the drive attached to the black connector will be connected to the cable. Pin 28 of the black drive reaches pin 28 of the host receptacle but not pin 28 of the gray drive, while pin 34 of the black drive reaches pin 34 of the gray drive but not pin 34 of the host. Instead, pin 34 of the host is grounded. The standard dictates color-coded connectors for easy identification by both installer and cable maker. All three connectors are different from one another. The blue connector has the socket for pin 34 connected to ground inside the connector but not attached to any conductor of the cable. Since the old 40 conductor cables do not ground pin 34, the presence of a ground connection indicates that an 80 conductor cable is installed. The conductor for pin 34 is attached normally on the other types and is not grounded. Installing the cable backwards, with the black connector on the system board, the blue connector on the remote device and the gray connector. On the center device, we'll ground pin 34 of the remote device and connect host pin 34 through to pin 34 of the center device. The gray center connector emits the connection to pin 28 but connects pin 34 normally, while the black end connector connects both pins 28 and 34 normally. If two devices are attached to a single cable, one must be designated as device 0 and the other as device 1. This distinction is necessary to allow both drives to share the cable without conflict. The device 0 drive is the drive that usually appears first to the computer's BIOS and or operating system. In most personal computers the drives are often designated as C, for the device 0 and D, for the device 1 referring to one active primary partitions on each. The terms device and drive are used interchangeably in the industry, as in master drive or master device. The mode that a device must use is often set by a jumper setting on the device itself, which must be manually set to device 0 or device 1. If there is a single device on a cable, it should be configured as device 0. However, some certain era drives have a special setting called single for this configuration. Also, depending on the hardware and software available, a single drive on a cable will often work reliably even though configured as the device 1 drive. The words primary and secondary typically refers to the two IDE cables, which can have two drives each. A drive mode called Cable Select was described as optional in ATA 1 and has come into fairly widespread use with ATA 5 and later. A drive set to Cable Select automatically configures itself as Device 0 or Device 1, according to its position on the cable. Cable Select is controlled by pin 28. The host adapter grounds this pin. If a device sees that the pin is grounded, it becomes the Device 0 device. If it sees that pin 28 is open, the device becomes the Device 1 device. This setting is usually chosen by a jumper setting on the drive called Cable Select, usually marked CS, which is separate from the Device 0 1 setting. Note that if two drives are configured as Device 0 and Device 1 manually, this configuration does not need to correspond to their position on the cable. Pin 28 is only used to let the drives know their position on the cable, it is not used by the host when communicating with the drives. With the 40 conductor cable, it was very common to implement cable select by simply cutting the pin 28 wire between the two device connectors, putting the device 1 device at the end of the cable, and the device 0 on the middle connector. This arrangement eventually was standardized in later versions. If there is just one device on a two-drive cable, using the middle connector, this results in an unused stub of cable, which is undesirable for physical convenience and electrical reasons. The stub causes signal reflections, particularly at higher transfer rates. Starting with the 80 conductor cable defined for use in a TAPI 5 slash UDMA 4, the device 0 device goes at the far from the host end of the 18-inch cable on the black connector. The slave device 1 goes on the gray middle connector, and the blue connector goes to the host. So, if there is only one device on a two-drive cable, using the black connector, there is no cable stub to cause reflections. Also, cable select is now implemented in the device 1 device connector, usually simply by emitting the contact from the connector body. The parallel ADA protocols up through ADA 3 require that once a command has been given on an ADA interface, it must complete before any subsequent command may be given. Operations on the devices must be serialized with only one operation in progress at a time with respect to the ADA host interface. A useful mental model is that the host ADA interface is busy with the first request for its entire duration, and therefore cannot be told about another request until the first one is complete. The function of serializing requests to the interface is usually performed by a device driver in the host operating system. 
The ATAFOR and subsequent versions of the specification have included an overlap feature set and a queued feature set as optional features. Both being given the name tagged command queuing, a reference to a set of features from SCSI which the ATA version attempts to emulate. However, support for these is extremely rare in actual parallel ATA products and device drivers because these feature sets were implemented in such a way as to maintain software compatibility with its heritage as originally an extension of the ESA bus. This implementation resulted in excessive CPU utilization which largely negated the advantages of command queuing. By contrast, overlapped and queued operations have been common in other storage buses, in particular, SCSI's version of tagged command queuing had no need to be compatible with APIs designed for ESA, allowing it to attain high performance with low overhead on buses which supported first-party DMA-like PCI. This has long been seen as a major advantage of SCSI. The serial ATA standard has supported native command queuing since its first release. But it is an optional feature for both host adapters and target devices. Many obsolete PC motherboards do not support NCQ, but modern SATA hard disk drives and SATA solid state drives usually support NCQ. Which is not the case for removable drives because the ATAPI command set used to control them prohibits queued operations. There are many debates about how much a slow device can impact the performance of a faster device on the same cable. There is an effect, but the debate is confused by the blurring of two quite different causes, called here lowest speed and one operation at a time. Lowest speed on early at a host adapters, both devices' data transfers can be constrained to the speed of the slower device, if two devices of different speed capabilities are on the same cable. For all modern at a host adapters, this is not true, as modern at a host adapters support independent device timing. This allows each device on the cable to transfer data at its own best speed. Even with earlier adapters without independent timing, this effect applies only to the data transfer phase of a read or write operation. One operation at a time this is caused by the emission of both overlapped and queued feature sets from most parallel ATA products. Only one device on a cable can perform a read or write operation at one time, therefore, a fast device on the same cable as a slow device under heavy use will find it has to wait for the slow device to complete its task first. However, most modern devices will report write operations as complete once the data is stored in their onboard cache memory, before the data is written to the magnetic storage. This allows commands to be sent to the other device on the cable, reducing the impact of the one operation at a time limit. The impact of this on a system's performance depends on the application. For example, when copying data from an optical drive to a hard drive, this effect probably will not matter. Such jobs are necessarily limited by the speed of the optical drive no matter where it is. But if the hard drive in question is also expected to provide good throughput for other tasks at the same time, it probably should not be on the same cable as the optical drive. ATA devices may support an optional security feature which is defined in an ATA specification, and thus not specific to any brand or device. The security feature can be enabled and disabled by sending special ATA commands to the drive. If a device is locked, it will refuse all access until it is unlocked. A device can have two passwords, a user password and a master password, either or both may be set. There is a master password identifier feature which, if supported and used, can identify the current master password. A device can be locked in two modes, high security mode or maximum security mode. Bit 8 in Word 128 of the identifier response shows which mode the disk is in, 0 equals high, 1 equals maximum. In high security mode, the device can be unlocked with either the user or master password, using the security unlock device at a command. There is an attempt limit, normally set to 5, after which the disk must be power cycled or hard reset before unlocking can be attempted again. Also in high security mode, the security erase unit command can be used with either the user or master password. In maximum security mode, the device can be unlocked only with the user password. If the user password is not available, the only remaining way to get at least the bare hardware back to a usable state is to issue the security erase prepare command, immediately followed by security erase unit. In maximum security mode, the security erase unit command requires the master password and will completely erase all data on the disk. Word 89 in the identify response indicates how long the operation will take. While the ATA lock is intended to be impossible to defeat without a valid password, there are purported workarounds to unlock a device. Pata to USB adapter. 
It is mounted on the rear of a DVD-RW optical drive inside an external case due to a short cable length specification and shielding issues it is extremely uncommon to find external PATA devices that directly use PATA for connection to a computer. A device connected externally needs additional cable length to form a U-shaped bend so that the external device may be placed alongside, or on top of the computer case, and the standard cable length is too short to permit this. For ease of reach from motherboard to device, the connectors tend to be positioned towards the front edge of motherboards, for connection to devices protruding from the front of the computer case. This front edge position makes extension out the back to an external device even more difficult. Ribbon cables are poorly shielded, and the standard relies upon the cabling to be installed inside a shielded computer case to meet RF emissions limits. External hard disk drives or optical disk drives that have an internal PATA interface, Use some other interface technology to bridge the distance between the external device and the computer. USB is the most common external interface, followed by FireWire. A bridge chip inside the external devices converts from the USB interface to PATA, and typically only supports a single external device without cable select or master slash slave. Compact Flash is a miniature ADA interface, slightly modified to be able to also supply power to the CF device. Compact Flash in its IDE mode is essentially a miniaturized ADA interface, intended for use on devices that use flash memory storage. No interfacing chips or circuitry are required, other than to directly adapt the smaller CF socket onto the larger ADA connector. The ADA connector specification does not include pins for supplying power to a CF device. So power is inserted into the connector from a separate source. The exception to this is when the CF device is connected to a 44-pin ADA bus designed for two 5-inch hard disk drives, commonly found in notebook computers, as this bus implementation must provide power to a standard hard disk drive. CF devices can be designated as devices 0 or 1 on an ADA interface, though since most CF devices offer only a single socket, it is not necessary to offer this selection to end users. Although CF can be hot-pluggable with additional design methods, by default when wired directly to an ADA interface, it is not intended to be hot-pluggable. The following table shows the names of the versions of the ADA standards and the transfer modes and rates supported by each. Note that the transfer rate for each mode gives its maximum theoretical transfer rate on the cable. This is simply 2 bytes multiplied by the effective clock rate, and presumes that every clock cycle is used to transfer end-user data. In practice, of course, protocol overhead reduces this value. Congestion on the host bus to which the ADA adapter is attached may also limit the maximum burst transfer rate. For example, the maximum data transfer rate for conventional PCI bus is 133 megabytes per second, and this is shared among all active devices on the bus. In addition, no ADA hard drives existed in 2005 that were capable of measured sustained transfer rates of above 80 megabytes per second. Furthermore, sustained transfer rate tests do not give realistic throughput expectations for most workloads, they use I.O. loads specifically designed to encounter almost no delays from seat time or rotational latency. Hard drive performance under most workloads is limited first and second by those two factors, the transfer rate on the bus is a distant third in importance. Therefore, transfer speed limits above 66 megabytes per second really affect performance only when the hard drive can satisfy all I.O. requests by reading from its internal cache, a very unusual situation. Especially considering that such data is usually already buffered by the operating system. As of July 2021, mechanical hard disk drives can transfer data at up to 524 megabytes per second, which is far beyond the capabilities of the PATA-133 specification. High-performance solid-state drives can transfer data at up to 7,000 to 7,500 megabytes per second. Only the ultra-DMA modes use CRC to detect errors in data transfer between the controller and drive. This is a 16-bit CRC, and it is used for data blocks only. Transmission of command and status blocks do not use the fast signaling methods that would necessitate CRC. For comparison, in serial ADA, 32-bit CRC is used for both commands and data. A TAPI devices with removable media, other than CD and DVD drives, are classified as armed and can appear as either a super floppy or a hard drive to the operating system. These can be supported as bootable devices by a BIOS complying with the ATAPI removable media device BIOS specification, originally developed by Compact Computer Corporation and Phoenix Technologies. It specifies provisions in the BIOS of a personal computer to allow the computer to be bootstrapped from devices such as zip drives, 
jazz drives, super disk drives, and similar devices. These devices have removable media like floppy disk drives, but capacities more commensurate with hard drives, and programming requirements unlike either. Due to limitations in the floppy controller interface most of these devices were a tappy devices, connected to one of the host computer's ADA interfaces, similarly to a hard drive or CD-ROM device. However, existing BIOS standards did not support these devices. An ARM-compliant BIOS allows these devices to be booted from and used under the operating system without requiring device-specific code in the OS. A BIOS implementing ARM allows the user to include ARM devices in the boot search order. Usually an ARM device is configured earlier in the boot order than the hard drive. Similarly to a floppy drive, if bootable media is present in the ARM drive, the BIOS will boot from it. If not, the BIOS will continue in the search order, usually with the hard drive last. There are two variants of ARMED, ARMED FDD and ARMED HDD. Originally ARMED caused the devices to appear as a sort of very large floppy drive, either the primary floppy drive device 00H or the secondary device 01H. Some operating systems required code changes to support floppy disks with capacities far larger than any standard floppy disk drive. Also, standard floppy disk drive emulation proved to be unsuitable for certain high-capacity floppy disk drives such as iOmega zip drives. Later the ARMED HDD, ARMED hard disk device, variant was developed to address these issues. Under ARMED HDD, an ARMED device appears to the BIOS and the operating system as a hard drive. In August 2004, Sam Hopkins and Brantley Coyle of Corade specified a lightweight ADA over Ethernet protocol to carry ADA commands over Ethernet instead of directly connecting them to a PATA host adapter. This permitted the established block protocol to be reused in storage area network applications. Thanks for watching.